It all started on a sunny summer day when a group of Norsemen, known to us as the Vikings, descended upon the island of Lindisfarne off the coast of England. The Vikings were looking for riches, land and power, and they believed that attacking monasteries was an excellent way to achieve all three. And so, on that fateful day in 793, the Vikings set their sights on the holy island of Lindisfarne. The monks who lived there were going about their business, tending to their gardens and praying to their god, when they suddenly saw a group of ships on the horizon. The strange Viking longships were strange to the monks, and they initially thought them to be traders. They soon found that this wasn't the case when the ships landed on the shore, and tall warriors with weapons and shields jumped from the boats. The Vikings landed on the island and began their attack. They killed some of the monks, ignored others and enslaved the rest. They were taken to be sold in bustling slave markets as far as Egypt or brought back across the sea to toil away on the Norse farms for the rest of their lives. The Vikings proceeded to the monastery and took everything of value, loading it onto their ships before burning the monastery to the ground. But was it a worthwhile venture or a cowardly attack against non-warriors? Artifacts from Lindisfarne indicate that the monks enjoyed material wealth. The Lindisfarne Gospels, a text that contains the canonical Christian Gospels, is decorated with colourful illustrations and was written on fine sheets of cattle hide. The texts were copied by Saint Eadfrith, who was Bishop of Lindisfarne between AD 698 and 721. How much would it cost to produce the Gospels is unknown, but scholars agree that it would have been substantial. The Norse warriors, many of them farmers, had come to find great wealth. They found that the southern and wealthy lands were undefended, and the sanctity of the church that protected monastery from Christians meant little to them. In the year 793, the Vikings attacked Lindisfarne, looting the monastery and killing or enslaving many of the monks. It was the first time the Vikings had attacked a monistic site in Britain. The pagans have desecrated God's sanctuary, shed the blood of saints around the altar, laid waste the house of our hope and trampled the bodies of the saints like dung on the street, wrote the priest Alcun in a letter addressed to Higbald, who was Bishop of Lindisfarne at the time of the attack. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle claimed that dragons were seen flying around Northumbria before the attack happened. The Chronicle entry said, This year came dreadful forewarnings over the land of the Northumbrians, terrifying the people most woefully. These were immense sheets of light rushing through the air, and whirlwinds and fiery dragons flying across the firmament. These tremendous tokens were soon followed by a great famine, and not long after, on the sixth day before the Ides of January in the same year, the harrowing inroads of heathen men made lamentable havoc in the Church of God on Holy Island by rape and slaughter. Alcun believed that God was punishing the monks at Lindisfarne for an unknown sin. The attack has not happened by chance, but is the sign of some great guilt, Alcun wrote in the letter to Bishop Higbald, going on to encourage the surviving monks to not wear fancy clothes, not drink, to pray often and to keep faith in God, and not have sex. The attack on Lindisfarne was only the beginning. The attack on Lindisfarne was only the beginning. Viking raids increased in Britain in following years, and eventually entire Viking armies landed in Britain, conquering parts of the country. Check out our Harold Hardrada video if you'd like to hear a little more about how the Viking era ended in Britain. As the Vikings attacked other holy sites, Alcuin kept writing letters encouraging priests and monks in Britain not to flee from the Vikings. After the attack on Lindisfarne, the body of St Cuthbert, along with other relics and artefacts, were moved to locations that the Vikings would have a hard time reaching. St Cuthbert's body was relocated a few times, eventually being brought to Durham Cathedral, where it is buried today. The Viking attack on the monastery is depicted in a stone found at Lindisfarne. Analysis of artefacts found at Lindisfarne indicate that, despite the Viking attack, the monastery remained open, although fewer monks may have lived there. The attacks became news to Christians across the whole of Europe, and before long, other attacks were launched. The Norsemen, who had spent years mastering the seas and learning trade routes, only to be looked down upon by Christians for their religion, had all of the knowledge that they needed to build wealth. They had learned that outside their own countries, there was unguarded wealth, ripe for the taking, and far more fertile lands that could be seized. And so began the Viking era. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a comment, like and subscribe. Of course, tell me where I've gone wrong, I often do.